And so we got interested in the notion of how people uh, make decisions when they're interacting with other other people. Mm-hmm. Um, and so uh, concepts like cooperation and coordination and competition. So how do decisions change when other people are involved? And one thing uh, I've always been very interested in is the concept of uh, inequality and unfairness that always seemed to be a... A remarkably strong motivating force in people's behavior. If people feel they're being treated unfairly, they're often willing to, you know, go to great lengths to try and um, address that or punish the people who are treating them badly, often way beyond what the actual uh, resource they're being treated unfairly about. I mean, you see it in children. If children feel their brother or sister gets more or less than them, you can really see how how, how yeah. strong uh, and aversive a yeah. feeling it is. So Very visceral. It is, yeah. And so so we were interested in seeing, could we study that in the lab? Could we make people feel unfair, unfairly treated? And um, what would that, that do in the brain? Could we make sense of that uh, neurally? And uh, we presented some ideas at, uh, at one of our lab meetings and, and Danny Kahneman, uh, who uh, it was nice to meet one of your heroes. He happened to be sitting in on the lab meeting. Wow. And one day he just said, you know, you should look at this game called the Ultimatum Game. That really gets at, at this kind of thing. We had never heard of the Ultimatum Game, which turned out to be a... Uh, a game proposed in experimental economics, which mm-hmm. wasn't super well known at the time, um, but we went off and investigated. And it turned out it was a, a quite nice task to enable us to put people into these situations where they felt unfairly treated. So in, in short, the ultimatum game is, is a task where you and your partner, who you don't know, so a, another person, are asked to share $10 between you. Um, your partner can make any proposal as to how this money can be shared. Uh, and then you have to decide whether this is a reasonable thing to do or not. So we were interested in situations where the partner offered you a very low amount. So he or she said, I'm going to keep $9 and I'm going to give you $1. So you're faced with this situation now where this very unfair division has been proposed and you can decide to either accept this offer you get $1, they get $9, and the game is over. Mm-hmm. Or you can reject the offer, in which case nobody gets anything. Um, and to uh, every model of economics that exists, this is a trivial choice. It's not even a choice, right? Because if you accept, you get $1. If you reject, you get $0. Right. So you would always accept. But as it turns out, and as we've seen now thousands and thousands of times, uh, people don't behave this way. So when people are confronted with this choice, more than half the time they say, no, I don't want any part of this, right? Mm -hmm. I'd rather have nothing and you get nothing than we have this unfair division. And so I think that shows the the profound effect of of this feeling of unfairness. So we were interested in studying this. We did many experiments. And in particular, we looked at what happens in the brain when people experience this moment of unfairness. And we found some uh, a nice network of brain areas um, that we've since replicated many, many times um, that started to give us some kind of toehold into how the brain encodes complex, I would say, uh, moral emotions such as kind of inf- unfairness, injustice, and, and so on. We, I think we were lucky when that paper came out. It happened at just the right time. People were really interested in neuroscience and fMRI. People were really interested in decision-making. We managed to merge these two, and uh, the papers turned out to be, yeah, um, at least well well cited over the years. And, right. Uh, and it yeah, took me off in a whole research direction, which I certainly hadn't anticipated when I showed up at Princeton. Um, <laughs> but when I left, I had a whole uh, kind of research path looking at these social influences. Um, so going beyond unfairness to, to other social motivations. But that, I guess that's what kickstarted. And, and yeah, it was, it was largely happenstance. I happened to be in the right place at the right time and um, was able to take advantage of that. So that was a, a good start. 